Hombre, got some agua. <laughs> so there's the grass. There's the dirt. <laughs> there's the old man noises. A man with lots of debt. Oh, right, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Dirt on there is good for the skin. Gets the uh, mosquito bites to go away. Lather it in there real good. So uh, this is an old cable line. That was cut by previous concrete work from whoever did it. And we got in here excavating for the footer and had an unmarked utility. Just clipped the uh, 230 volt wire. Just cut like a little strand of it. Literally, most all the power still run to the house, but the 230 was out. So, had to have Duke come in, fix that. Um, the white pipe here, that's the water main, that was good. And then here's the old, or the new cable that's representative of this. That shit's all good, but they just replaced everything to be safe. Um, we got the footer dug mostly up to here, then another down yonder. And this area we were originally gonna do, and the client just said, just skip it. She's like, it's gonna be too tight in here to walk through. So we're skipping it. Could have done it, but we're gonna skip it. Um, that's all done. Now we're gonna haul out all the landfill debris. We're gonna get that out and bring in a trailer load of gravel to start working on the base prep here. And then bring in some block and get this puppy built, baby. They're a dollar a piece, but that was not enough, so I gave him 10 bucks a piece. Ah, I told him to keep hustling. I love the spirit.
Yeah, so we're gonna pick up where we left off, right? Last we talked about is what we're doing here. Now let's talk about what we've already done. The front yard is cleared of debris. There's piles to be hauled away tomorrow. Front yard is cleared. Side backyard is cleared. Other side of yard is 99% cleared. Front by the doorway is cleared. Um, pretty much all the demo work is done. Now we've dug the footer for the wall, which I believe I've already shown you. We've got gravel in for the base, for this first section is in. Um, need to put more gravel. We just brought three pallets of block, so we have enough block to get going. Probably need another three pallets for everything else. Um, and I need the cap as well. We're using Ridge Rock on this product, this project, 12 inch. Also, little update of what happened over the weekend. When was it? Saturday, we were working, doing some uh, punch list items on another project. And I realized the truck is like making scraping noise. I'm like, what the heck? Sounds like the brakes. Pull over, check. The rear brakes are completely gone on the right side down to the metal pad. So the organic material is completely gone off of it. Wore through. And the left side is almost worn through. Maybe another two millimeters, if that of organic material left on the pad. So the rear brakes are exceptionally wearing out quickly and I'm guessing the right one is dragging because I don't know why it wore out since I just replaced it maybe in March, March, February, something like that. Pretty pretty recently, like within six months. I put maybe 15,000 miles on them, if that. So something's not good. What I used was the AutoZone Gold, the best ones they had in stock. They wore out quick in comparison to the Power Stop. Z36 pads that I had before and the front is still those so I ordered new brakes new brake pads rotors all around cost $1,800 shift $1,800 so that's ordered and that's coming in Thursday and in the meantime my truck is sitting parked in the parking lot and I can't drive it because the pads are gone so until then I ended up renting renting an enterprise truck which you probably already saw in clips. We have that, we've been driving on it today, bringing in, bringing in materials, taking out landfill stuff, all that. So that's done. And on top of that, I had a call last night that the guys, they hit the, uh, the main electric line that ran to the house, which was an indisclosed location that was unmarked. What ended up happening is as they're digging, he's very careful, the operator's pretty good, and he just nicked it nicked it so all the power didn't go out but the 230 volt line went out so the AC is not working in the house and their ovens not working but the main lights are working so they had uh, we had to call Duke they came out looked at it repaired it last night and got everything back working but sometimes the lines are not marked you know so I typically I I visually check to see where the meter box is you know where's the main water line box all those things when I'm digging but my operator's good, but he didn't check for the meter box. He was just looking for markings and it wasn't marked. So sometimes it's not marked and it was super shallow. It was only five inches from gray, literally five inches. So it shouldn't have been there, but it was there. So that's one little adversity that we had to deal with. That's been taken care of. And now I think that's pretty much it. I need to lay some block tomorrow and then collect my 75% progress check that'll be sick and carry on forward get ready to go to the next one I have to sneeze all right check this out guys this ridge rock wall block 12 inch right so I've installed this before this is more my backup wall block when I can't find Belgard or Teco here we wanted Belgard couldn't find it ridge rock will do um, what I've used before was this section of the shape this is kind of new I haven't seen this before not sure what that's about maybe it's just commercial grade but the interlocking section of this block if you twist it you can see this protruding section right here that's what interlocks into each block below and the back not totally sure probably support extra weight and then you core fill it with gravel you take the gravel you fill it and that kind of adds more weight and strength dexterity to the wall block you have a beautiful face. It is super rough, beveled corners. 
that kind of gives you just a little different look. It's also a little easier to hide churns and corners, things like that. And since this wall's pretty curvy, that's what I went for. Um, gray, standard, fills in, works. That's kind of what we're going for. So that's that. Next, I'm gonna show you some stumps, just so you kind of see it. If you've never seen it before, it might be interesting to you. Let's walk over there. Stumps, wood, dirt, different angles, ugliness, disgustingness, hauling out ofness. That's all it is. Just, just lumber, wood, unusables basically, stuff that needs to be hauled out. So this is a pretty big stump. I think this was a 16 inch, 14 inch, something like that. That's like a 24 inch, that's pretty good. I know it took him a while to tear this one out with a 3035, so that took a while. There's some more stumps in here. You got crepe myrtles, pines, oaks, all kinds of random little stuff. So we got a good trailer load here. We can haul out tomorrow morning. So yeah, that's what disgustingness looks like when it gets hauled out of the ground. So uh, I oh I also definitely recommend I definitely recommend to haul out stumps. Don't just grind them down. Why? Because when you grind them down, yeah, you don't see them. But what if in the future you want to plant something there? The stumps are in the way. You can't plant a bush. You can't plant a bigger bush. You can't even plant the biggest bush. There's just no room for the roots to get down. So excavate, haul away. Pay the extra bucks, get it done, and then you always have that availability, availability, availability in the future versus you do, you just grind it, pay the little cheaper one-third price, let, let your landscape grow in, your grass grow, and then, oh, I have to tear them out because I want to plant new bushes. And now you got to ruin everything that you just grew over the past five years. So, tear them out. Got it?